Really interesting. It's always nice to know the backstory of anything. <laughs> and that one was very informative. And talking about backstory, something really interesting uh, about to go down. We have two folks in the studio this morning. Dr. Case, let's begin with him, uh, known as Darren Phillips as well. He's a financial and investment manager. But before you go, what, what, well, he's also a songwriter, a producer, a musician, and DJ. Now with him, we also have another DJ talking about DJ Lambo. Uh, she is uh, uh, someone very, we, we all know DJ Lambo, of course. <laughs> There's so much about her, especially the fact that she's the head and president of uh, Chalk Boy Nation. But that's something we'll still talk about. It's so good to have you both in the studio with us this morning. Thank you. How are you Thank doing? You. Thank you for having us. Thank uh, great. <laughs> now, before you wonder what the financial invest... It's one guy has to do with the DJ. That's why I had to point out the fact that both of them have uh, the DJ background. He has the DJ background, though she is more of the one projecting the DJ uh, uh, job for now. But hey, it's good to have you both. You guys have Thank a you. collaboration Thank together. You. Yes. And I know that's the main thing that is going on. But before that, let's talk about you, okay? Uh, so I want to talk about you first because... Yeah. I need you to put it all together. You're a man of many, shall we say many parts. So how do you cope with switching from one persona to another? Because to me, it seems like having different persona. The way you are now is not the way you're going to be, say, at 10 a.m. perhaps, when you have to <laughs> attend a board meeting. No, to be honest, um, I think the key word to describe me is um, a creative. And I try to apply creativity to all aspects of my life, you know. Um, whether it's dedicating one hour to producing every week or, you know, running an investment business or, you know, even a Greek business, all different facets of things I do, it is all planned and dedicated. But, you know, more importantly, I would like to use my life as an example of the reason why you should be living your best life. You know, there's no point limiting yourself to one aspect and saying, you're only going to do A, you're only going to do B. Because we're all multifaceted, especially with sure. somewhere like Lagos or Nigeria. We have so many talented people that can do so many things. And, you know, realistically, we need all the help we can get in this country. You know, and we need different people to wear different hats and, you know, do different things. You know, career switches can be really difficult. Mm -hmm. But before I talk about yours, I should talk about yours. Yours is kind of related because you started off as an OAP yeah. before switching to DJing. But yeah. then most people will tell you that DJs, OAPs, aren't they just about the same thing? <laughs> but what made you decide to make that switch? Um, well, for me, I'd, I'd always wanted to be a DJ anyway because my dad was a DJ. Okay. So, um, but at the time, like growing up, I didn't think... First of all, DJs weren't given as much recognition as they've been given now. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And then... Because I'm female, there aren't that many female DJs. So I kind of wasn't encouraged to be a DJ, even though by myself, you know. And then after a while, being an OAP, seeing the DJs come around, you know, I started to learn one or two things. I started to know about music and what type of music goes with another type of music, you know. And it just kept tugging at my heart. And at the end of the day, I'm like, you know what? I'm going to just shut everything down and just focus on this one thing. So was it as an OAP or when you became a DJ that you met um, MI and you guys started working together? Uh, I met MI long before all this, but I mean, we didn't stay in touch. So mm -hmm. we knew each other, but we weren't like in touch all the time. And then when I became a DJ, we kind of reconnected again through a friend of mine and... Um, I'm like, yo, I'm a DJ now. And he's like, oh, I'm actually looking for a DJ. So it was just like perfect timing, you know. Wow. Okay, so I was going to talk about your own switch as well. So you started off in like music and all, right? Or how did you start off your career? Um, okay, so I've always worked at the bank. I've always been a fixed income trader. So even before the DJ career. Um, so whilst in uni, I started DJing whilst I was studying finance. Came back, worked in a bank, you know, then took DJing very seriously, so I dropped everything. Okay. And then, you know, focused on DJing. But in between, I decided to take a break, do some soul searching. And then, soul searching? Yes. <laughs> and then I decided to live my best life. And it's, it's been amazing. You this know, best just, life you keep talking about, does it also involve you taking your regular career and still being the president of the DJ Association? Yeah. Like, one would think that that's 
title, so to speak, will go to someone who is an active DJ. Not my use of active. When I say active, someone like a DJ Lambo, for example, that that's basically what she does. That's what she's known for. But how were you able to pull that off, becoming the president of such an association? Um, I think it was, it's, it's leadership skills, to be honest. And um, in as much as I still DJ, I'm releasing an album, I'm still doing all this music stuff, I think it was more of, okay, who is the person that can lead us to where we want to be? Um, it's definitely a responsibility, yeah. you know, in as much as the title sounds fancy, but it's a lot of work. Yeah. So it just fell into my laps, you know, and I ran with it. We were doing great things. You know, the other time me and Lambo went to South Africa, and we were hanging out with um, DJ Zandi and a few other South African DJs. I mean, we were all just, you know, connecting, and that was solely because of this group. And you have a lot of situations, people going to Botswana, people going to even the US and America, and they're hanging out with DJs that they wouldn't have, you know, and the connection is being made, you know, Afrobeats has taken over. It's yeah. a different ball game entirely. So it's, it's an association we're all proud of and, you know, we're just trying to push. Yeah, so, something for you to be proud of. Uh, yeah. your... Let me just say quickly to add to what he said. I yeah. think for me, being a member of the association, I think the fact that he has both backgrounds kind of helped in getting him that position as well because we kind of needed someone who is not just about the lifestyle yeah. but also can Knows seriously the business aspect as exactly. well and help you guys grow exactly. which is very commendable exactly. really see what he said about living your best life yeah it's always good to have background in different yeah. things it's just like being a lawyer and an artist yeah. you can fight for what you believe is right because you exactly. have the background you have, you have the, the knowledge as well exactly. okay so i was going to talk about um, your tour because there was a DJ Lambo USA tour in 2019 before mm. COVID happened. Yeah. <laughs> so between that time and yeah. now, mm -hmm. why haven't we had another tour? Is it because of COVID or is it yeah, something that you're Yeah, mostly because on? of COVID. It's kind of tough to travel around now as, of, as much as you would like or as freely as you would like. But, I mean, the team and I are working. We're still working and we're trying to figure out how we can pull something off, even if not to the magnitude we want. But, you know, well, we still you try to make it happen. How you pull off that tour? Um, at the time, there were so many factors involved. There was Chocolate City. There was my management at the time. You know, everybody just put hands together and we made it happen. Okay. <laughs> and something else that is happening right now is your collaboration. Mm -hmm. How did you guys come up with it? Like, was it a case of, uh, Lambo, let's do something together? It was just something that had been coming, coming, till it eventually happened. You well, want to tell the story? <laughs> I, Lambo, I just knew there was Lambo, a story. Lambo always tells the story better. <laughs> well, Case and I have, have been working together and have been friends for about 10 years, if wow, not more, more than 10 years, plus. 10 years plus. So, and um, initially we were working together. I was kind of like shadowing him okay. and... Um, yeah, pretty much. I'll say that. I was, I was pretty much his prodigy. Okay. I told her everything and she knows. Ah, <laughs> show off. <laughs> so anyway, yeah, we're working together. We're friends. We're, and, you know, because of the work, that we're hanging out together, spending a lot of time together. We're sharing music together, you know, learning new things together. You know, so I think at this point, we're like, yo, when we went to SA, he, he spoke about the trip. We were, we had this live session where he was producing beats and I was just playing like different vocals over okay. the beats. Okay. And the vibe, if you check my Instagram, it's probably still there. The vibe was so amazing. We were wow. like, yo, we need to actually figure out how to make this a, a thing. reality. And, yeah. yeah. Wow. And it's, it's been a dope experience. Um, mm -hmm. The, you know, Lambo has always been a pure soul. She's probably one of the happiest people I know. <laughs> and, um, you know, getting that energy in the studio was interesting, you know. Um, just that whole process of getting together. At times, you know, we'd have really productive sessions. At times, we'd just be hanging out. But just that boot camp session, you know, with the, with the instrumentalist and, you know, over a period of, I think it was like two months, or two to three months, you know, and uh, what you have is an amazing product. experience. And the, the feedback is, is the uniqueness of the sounds, the difference in the... And the quality, and which is why we named it Venus and Mars, because it's like two different worlds coming together, coming together. and um, producing so, the body work. I must say that I find it commendable that you both wear many hats. Most times when you have conversations with artists, they are just um, 
you know, just one way or... I'm not wearing any hands, but... <laughs> Should we borrow it? <laughs> it's, it's, it's very commendable that you, for example, you are not just a DJ, you're also the president of uh, Chalk Boy Nation, which is, of course, uh, uh, kind of like a branch of uh, Chocolate City Chocolate Music, City, a record yeah. label. Uh, you're also doing your own music, you're doing so much. You, your CV is well known. <laughs> <laughs> but you get the idea. Like, yeah. I find it really commendable. But Thank you. do you sometimes wish you could, like, take off that imaginary hat, put it aside, and just, like, ah, I just want to be myself? Um, to be honest, I'll say I'm blessed. First of all, I used to be the president of Chocolate City, not anymore. Okay. Uh, CBN, not anymore. But um, I would say I'm blessed mm. because... Not everybody can love what they do as much as I do. That's true. My whole life is pretty much tied to my work. So from my daily routine to everything, and it's stuff that I actually enjoy doing. So even if I was to say, okay, take off the hat and relax, what am I going to be doing? I'm going to be making music or listening to music. Do you get what I mean? So it's a part of who I am. And for me, it's not pressure because I actually enjoy it. Because it's what you love doing. Yeah. Wow. Thank, thank you guys so much. <laughs> I, like, this conversation could go on because I'm like, I have several questions I want to ask you. Yeah. But we have to take this break, like, listen to some stuff. And then, of course, we have breakfast for you. Awesome. Oh, nice. uh, yeah, you're going to like this one. Suya Alfredo. Like, you oh, know when you hear okay. Alfredo, the last thing you think of is Suya. I right? like Suya a lot, so this should be good. <laughs> Let's take a look at this. Whoa.